Hi guys, I'm Brielle and I am a part-time wheelchair user. I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which means that my joints are pretty weak and they do have a lot of pain involved. And I also experience blood pooling. So I'm in a part-time wheelchair. I use it for most of the week. I wanted to kind of tell you guys a little bit about my experience or at least like what I experienced when I was going through my initial evaluation to get a wheelchair. Basically, I wanted to kind of give you guys sort of a comprehensive view of like what the evaluation looks like um, when you're working with just the physical therapist. So different dealers do it different ways. Basically what a wheelchair evaluation is, is you are meeting up with a physical therapist and maybe a dealer. The dealer may or may not be there for that first appointment. You're meeting up with those two people or just the physical therapist in order to determine what type of chair you need, what you're gonna be using it for, is it medically necessary, all those sorts of things in order to send some good notes to insurance to ensure that they will cover the chair for you and to kind of get you on the right path with what kind of chair you're looking for to make sure the dealer's aware of that. First off, I'm just gonna go over what they would probably ask you prior to the physical evaluation. These are just sort of the questions that I was asked when I did my evaluation, my dealer was there and doing measurements and stuff while we were asking these questions, but you know, these questions did get asked by the physical therapist. Basically, they asked me some disability related questions. So like what was what is my current mobility status and what is my past mobility status, which is basically what can and can't you do? So can you make it to the bathroom from your bedroom by yourself? Can you make it to the kitchen? Can you cook? Can you clean? Can you get in and out of bed on your own? Can you make it to work? Can you drive? Those sorts of things. And the reason that they ask that is to kind of determine like, well, what are our goals with this wheelchair? And there is a section um, of questions on kind of the goals, but this kind of helps them to determine, well, when we're trying to improve their quality of life, what is realistic? So like, let's say that right now, you don't have the physical ability to get in and out of bed on your own. Well, maybe then you'd be looking at something like a chair that will be definitely right by the bed so that it's easier for you to transfer from the bed into the chair on your own. These sorts of things also help when they're asking questions about like, well, can you get up and walk? Like, is your balance okay? Like, how do you experience that? Because obviously later they test it, but sort of knowing your experience is really important. So like I have, okay balance when I am using something to brace myself on. So getting in and out of the chair for me is usually fine as long as I've got the brakes on and it's relatively stable. I don't need like a flip up footboard or something that I would be able to flip the footboard up and stand directly. I can step over the footboard and get up myself. And then also, what does the future look like with your disorder? So there are a lot of different disorders that are progressive. So like if they're looking at like, well, if we wanna find something that's long-term, Let's say right now you have the ability to get out of the chair on your own without like having a flip up footboard, but in the future it might be more difficult for you to do that, like it might be a degenerative disease. So then they would probably look at, well, let's plan for the future. Do we need to get you a whole new chair when things get worse, or can we make sure that we're getting the modifications on that chair done prior to that happening? So that kind of gives them a good idea of like, where they're at in a sense of different modifications that need to be done to your chair to make it more customized to kind of what your worst case scenario looks like. Next, they probably will talk about some environmental things. So like, what does a day in your life look like? So are you kind of home by yourself all day? Are you home with a caretaker? Do you work? Do you drive? Do you go to school? That kind of stuff. And the reason that they ask that is just kind of to get a good idea of like, well, you know, if someone's in their home a lot, maybe they don't need big treads on their on their wheelchair. Maybe they don't need stuff like that because they're not really going outside very often. Or maybe they're like me and I'm in college and I'm on a college campus a lot. I need treads so that if it snows, I can still get from class to class. As well as like, well, you know, I'm not gonna be in my chair that often. I'm in bed most of the time. So maybe you don't need 
a big cushy seat because you're only in there just getting from place to place, moving to different chairs. It's more of a transportation device instead of like a, well, I'm gonna be in this all day. And then they might also ask you about what areas you frequent, are they accessible? So like the different areas that I'm in, like, you know, my school buildings are usually pretty accessible. We have a lot of ramps and wheelchair um, ramps and elevators for wheelchairs however you know some of the doorways are pretty skinny so you know that's something that they had to consider other areas like places like oh well let's say that you work on a farm you know that area is kind of difficult to make it accessible because of the terrain so that kind of gives them an idea of what they're working with in a sense of where are you, where will this chair be used? What does this chair need to be prepared for? And then they're also probably gonna ask you about kind of your goals. So why are you getting this chair? Like what do you want to accomplish? So like what would you like to do right now, but can't? So like for me specifically, one of the biggest things I was like, I really wanna be able to just go outside more often. And I really wanna be able to walk around more often and I want getting to my classes to be easier and I would like to be able to go on more walks that kind of stuff or like my friend who is attempting to get a wheelchair right now one of the things that she wanted to do is she wanted to spend some more time doing like different school activities so she wanted to be in like this leadership involvement team on our campus and she was having a hard time doing that because of the same thing she would have this fatigue issue and she would go and then she would be too tired to focus just from like getting to the meeting those sorts of things or like let's say that you want to have a job but you can't because you don't have a wheelchair those sorts of things are probably what they're looking for when they ask you that they're also going to ask you what equipment you've tried what has helped and what hasn't helped so for me i have tried many different things i've tried a walker a rollator a cane just kind of a myriad of different different mobility aids that I have attempted to use. I use braces on a daily basis, those sorts of things. Knowing what has and hasn't helped can be helpful for them so that they can kind of determine, well, you know, this sort of thing was helpful, so let's look for something similar to that. This they will especially ask if you're at an appointment for a mobility aid and that's and they don't talk about like oh well it is a specifically a wheelchair they might be talking about like a rollator or something like that and for me i was looking for a wheelchair because i had already tried a rollator i'd tried basically the top right before a wheelchair like the top option and it was helpful but it wasn't helpful enough so they kind of knew that going into it um and they knew that it was helpful in the sense that it helped me to get to things with like my balance issues but it wasn't helpful because i was standing for so long that basically the blood would pool in my legs and so with a wheelchair that definitely doesn't happen as often sorry about that that lighting looks a lot better yikes well too late now one of the other things that they might ask you kind of regarding your goals is do you currently have help performing certain activities and like which activities and what kind of help? If you have help showering, so like if you can't stand in the shower to bathe yourself or if you can't, if you don't have the mobility to bathe yourself when you're in the bathtub, that kind of thing is also something that's really helpful for them to know. Or things like cooking, like if you have to have help with the oven or if you have to have help cutting things. Um, if you have reduced mobility doing those sorts of things, that's helpful for them to know as well. So those are kind of the things to think about, just kind of like life activities. So if you have trouble like driving, you know, like different life activities that you would have issues with and need help um, from someone else. If you have like a caretaker that helps you or a nurse that helps you or someone in your life that helps you, that's important for them to know. So that's kind of a big overview of the different questions that they will ask you kind of that aren't like physical related, that aren't like, a physical evaluation but I may have missed some if I did miss some please leave them down in the comments I've only had one wheelchair evaluation in my life and I attended my friends as well but hers was kind of weird so I guess I would consider it like one like real official one that I've been to so that was just kind of my experience those are kind of the questions that I got but now I'm gonna move on to kind of what the physical evaluation looks like for the physical evaluation they're gonna start out probably with muscle strength. And they might like met, move around in order on these, but um, at least for me, this is what happened. 
So they're gonna talk about your muscles. So they're gonna test your different muscular strengths. So like they have different machines that they use to test these things to see how much you can lift, that kind of stuff. And they're gonna test all the major muscle groups in your upper and lower extremities. So that includes your arms and hands and your legs and feet. And that includes your grip strength. So they will have you like pinch something to see what your grip strength is. And that's just to make sure that you have enough grip strength to grab onto that push rim. So all of these things are really helpful in them determining what type of chair or what modifications that you need. They're also gonna be looking at trunk, which is the kind of, you know, that's the base of your body right above your butt, so your lower back, and your neck strength. So can you move your neck forward and backward and that kind of stuff? Or are you gonna have a hard time sitting up like that for a long period of time with your neck forward? That kind of stuff. Then they're gonna be looking at motor control. So can you control a chair with your upper extremities and keep your lower extremities in check while you're going? Or are your legs gonna have tremors and you're gonna kick out and like stop yourself on the ground? Like are your arms gonna just randomly, you know, clench shut and stop your chair? Different things like that are really important to make sure that you can use a chair in a safe way. So like if you have Tourette's or if you have another tick disorder, something like that might prevent you from using a wheelchair safely because if you do have physical tics that would prevent you from being able to be safe in your wheelchair, then they might be looking at like a power chair or something else. They might look at like a different modification to make to the chair to make sure that it's safe for your specific disorder. They're also gonna be looking pretty heavily at muscle tone. Like are you learn are you leaning way backwards? Are you leaning way forwards? Do you have scoliosis? I've got scoliosis. So that kind of stuff, are, they're gonna be looking at what your body shape is to sort of determine like, do you need more back support or do you need a cushion that's like specific for that kind of stuff just to make sure like, okay, this is what we're working with. They're also gonna be looking at your reflexes. So like, you know, they're gonna do that, those reflex tests where they bang on your knee and whatever to see like how your reflexes are. If you do have like a nervous system disorder or something else that would reflect, something else that would affect your reflexes that might determine that you need some modifications done to your chair or might need like a power chair or something to make sure that things like stopping your chair in time happen or things like turning your chair in time happen and that won't like affect those things. Another thing that was a big issue for me was skin integrity. Um, I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which means that I produce a lot less collagen than other people um, and my body doesn't process it right. So my skin is thin and it's very soft and easy to break and bruise and tear. So I do have a lot of pressure related injuries that happen and that's sort of what they're looking for here. So because of my pressure related injuries, I did end up getting a different backrest and a different cushion as well as cushioned armrests to kind of like decrease, hopefully decrease that from happening. And then they also recommended that I wear gloves when using my chair so that I have less kind of pressure related injuries from the um, rims of the chair. However, you know, they're looking to make sure that things like you sitting in the chair for too long aren't going to cause like big pressure sores. And if you have like a higher risk of infection and then also like a tendency to have pressure related injuries, they're really gonna be looking at keeping you safe in your chair since you're gonna be sitting there for a long time. They're also going to be looking at your balance ability, kind of your sitting and standing balance. So when you're sitting up, do you balance or do you kind of lean one way, lean the other way, lean back, lean forward? Where's your balance at? Where's your point of center of gravity? And then also they're gonna be looking at your standing balance. I'm not 100% sure why they look at this because like you're gonna be sitting, but I know they checked mine and my balance is terrible. <laughs> so, but we already knew that. They're gonna be looking at that just to kind of make sure like, oh, well, you know, for for your balance in your chair, they're gonna be looking to make sure that your center of gravity is in the right spot. Mine is two inches off from zero, and that's because I do have kind of poor sitting balance, but that's okay, it's not that bad um, compared to some of the other center of gravities that I've seen that they've had to make larger. Kind of determines where your wheels, what angle your wheels are at. It helps for them to know that so that they can give you the right center of gravity on your chair and make sure that you're well balanced when you're in your chair and that you feel stable. Lastly, they will be looking at range of motion and flexibility of all of your major joints, sitting and laying down. So obviously I have EDS and my joints are crazy. Basically, they're gonna be looking at to make sure that none of your major joints are gonna be causing 
an issue with you being able to use the chair. So like, let's say that my, my range of motion is very small. Maybe a power chair is the only option that would work for me because I don't have the range of motion to wheel a wheelchair or to control a power assist. So that kind of stuff would be really important for them to know as well. As well as things like, oh, well, you know, I can't, re I can wheel a wheelchair, but I can't reach down to turn the brakes on. Well, maybe they can put a brake higher up on the chair so that it's easier for you to reach. Different things like that are why they look at range of motion and flexibility. So that's kind of all I had for you guys today. I'm sorry that it wasn't like very comprehensive, but that's just kind of the questions that I got asked and the questions that I saw that other people got asked at their appointments. And I just wanted to kind of put them in a video together for you guys so that you who are going into a wheelchair appointment for yourself or for a family member or a friend, you kind of know what's to be expected and can prepare accordingly. Cause I wish that I would have known that these are the questions before I went in. Because if I did, then I probably would have prepared like a list of answers or something. <laughs> but I didn't, so I wish I had this video a couple months ago. Um, I hope that this can help you guys out with your wheelchair assessments, and I wish you good luck, and I, you know, welcome to the wheelchair squad. So yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching, and I will see you guys in whatever we make next.